So the second part of the kidney PowerPoint is going to continue starting at the glomerulus. So in the kidneys one recording, we kind of did an overview of all the sections of the kidney, all the sections of the nephron, and I gave you a few details about each of them. But now we're going to go into detail and do the very specific uh, mechanisms and physiology of each of the sections. So we'll start at the glomerulus, which is the first part of the nephron. So the glomerulus does a process called filtration. And filtration is when blood enters in through the afferent arteriole, goes into the glomerulus, which is the name of the capillary bed, and it's able to filter solutes and water out of that capillary bed into this space. Um, and this space is the glomerular space. This space collects all that filtrate and brings it down into the first part of the tubule called the PCT. For now, we're just going to focus right over here. <clears throat> and what you learned last time was that there are two filtration membranes. The first filtration membrane is itself going to be the capillary. Remember, capillaries are single-celled layered thick, and therefore it's easy to diffuse across them. But also remember that in capillary walls, um, there are fenestrations, which are little tiny holes, and you're going to see that in um, an illustration coming up. Sitting on top of the capillary bed, so sitting on top of this glomerulus, we could call it, are going to be cells called podocytes, these yellow cells that have these little leg extensions. These podocytes are considered the um, visceral layer of this capsule. So the podocytes have a visceral layer, and this layer of tightly packed simple squamous epithelium is the parietal layer, and in between it is the capsular space. So filtrate has to first filter out of the fenestrations, then filter out of the podocytes before it can actually be captured in the capsular space. Now, why do we do that? <clears throat> well, because there are a few items in the glomerulus or in the blood circulation that we do not want to filter out into the tubule to eventually get peed out. So those items include blood cells, large plasma proteins, um, larger anions, uh, any kind of protein-bound hormone. These items you should not be peeing out. They are larger than 8 nanometers. So if you're larger than 8 nanometers, you're not even going to fit through these fenestrations right over here. So this represents the single cell layer of the wall of the capillary bed. These openings uh, represent the fenestrations, so the holes in the capillary wall. And these guys here represent the legs of the podocytes. And in between those legs, you have little tiny spaces where they like intersect one another. These little spaces are called filtration slits. This is a very important word. So podocytes, and filtration slits are the two ways in which you can filter fluids from blood into the tubular region. The items that do get through are going to include water, electrolytes, which are your salts, glucose, shouldn't be a lot of glucose, just small amounts of glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, and then these three here, these are all waste. All three of these contain nitrogen inside of them. You do not want to accumulate nitrogenous waste in your blood. So your kidneys have a way of excreting them out through the kidney and that filtration process. So if we look closely um, at the glomerulus, you see that the inner wall of the glomerulus, this is going to be where we have the simple squamous epithelium with those fenestrations. So this is going to be the membrane of the capillary, and all those holes are fenestration. So important term to remember, fenestration. On top of this membrane, you have what's called a basement membrane. This isn't really a membrane made out of any sort of cells, but it is a membrane that is going to be sitting on top of the glomerulus, under the podocytes, and it's almost like glue that holds the podocytes onto the membrane. This is also slightly negatively charged. If you look on top of the basement membrane, that's where you're going to see your podocytes. And the podocytes are just specialized types of cells, which means just like any other basic cell, they have a cell body, they have a nucleus, and what's different about them is that their cell extends to create these little leg-like structures. 
The leg-like structures will intertwine with the neighboring leg structures. And if you see the middle, these little tiny slits, these little openings, these are called filtration slits. So not only does the filtrate have to be able to fit through the fenestration, but it also has to fit through the filtration slit. This double filtration mechanism ensures that things that are too large, like these items that should not be filtered out into the urine, that they get held back in the blood supply. <clears throat> so again, let's review some terms because I'm gonna start using these terms back to back. When you go from the glomerulus into the capsular space, this is called filtration. Sometimes they call it ultrafiltration. When you have solutes or fluids going from tubule back into the blood, this is called reabsorption. And then in the opposite direction, from the blood into the tubule to be excreted out, this is called secretion. These two words are key. Do not mix them up. Make sure you know the difference between reabsorption and secretion. So, Sticking with the glomerulus, let's look at a little bit of math. This is going to be, I think, about the only math you have in this entire uh, PowerPoint. And it should be pretty easy. And it's all about pressure. So when blood enters in through the afferent arterial, it comes in with a certain amount of pressure. That pressure that that blood comes in with into the glomerulus is called the BHP, the blood hydrostatic pressure. This should be the highest pressure in the entire structure. Now naturally, because you have this tight fitting capsule surrounding it, you do have a pressure that's pushing back in. These two pressures here are pushing back in onto the capillary. The CP, the capsular pressure, is the pressure that's put onto the glomerulus by this tight fitting capsule. The other one, the COP, is called colloid osmotic pressure. This is just the idea that if you're a large protein, you're not going to be able to filter out of the glomerulus. And where does water always want to follow? Water always wants to follow a high solute concentration. And because a protein is considered a solute and it stays in the glomerulus, water from this capsular space is going to say, ooh, look, there's proteins in here. Let's move into the glomerulus. That is colloid osmotic pressure. The pressure of water pushing onto the glomerulus in order to get into the glomerulus and be with the high concentration of proteins that's left behind in here. Now, these three pressures, their net pressure must be a positive number because that will indicate that the net movement of filtrate is going to be out of the glomerulus filtering waste products out into the tubule to eventually be peed out. If this number was smaller than the sum of these two numbers, then that would indicate that you have more pressure pushing into the glomerulus and you're taking waste products from this capsular space, putting it back into the blood supply to go back into your circulation. That means your blood that's leaving this region is gonna be dirty, full of waste products like urea, uric acid, ammonium. So the net of these is gonna be the pressure pushing out minus the total pressure pushing back in. That is this equation down here. So again, the pressure pushing out minus the two pressures pushing back in. Your net pressure, the overall pressure, should be pushing out so that you are able to filter waste out of the glomerulus and into the tubule. Now, that rate at which you are pushing filtrate out is called the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. Go ahead and write that down glomerular filtration rate. It's just like that name states. It is the rate that the glomerulus can filter out solutes and water. Now, if I go back a slide, 
if this BHP, the blood hydrostatic pressure, let's say you're someone who has just high blood pressure, for whatever reason you have high blood pressure, if this blood pressure is really, really high, your net filtration is going to be really high as well. You're going to be filtering out a whole lot of solute and water. And in your head, you might be thinking, oh, that's good, right? Because we're going to be filtering a lot of waste. Well, the word solute, when I say we filter out a lot of solute, that's not just waste. That's actually salts, sugars, some small proteins that you actually need to keep in your blood. So having a high blood hydrostatic pressure and having a high filtration rate doesn't mean you're just filtering out waste. It actually means you're filtering out things that you still need in your body that you're going to end up peeing out and losing from your body, which is not a good thing. That is what this is. When the glomerular filtration rate is too high, you have too much filtration happening out of the glomerulus. That means you have way too much solute leaving the glomerulus going into the tubule. And again, what always follows a high solute concentration? Water. So if you have high solute, that means you're going to have a lot of water leaving your blood also and going into the tubule. If you have a lot of water filtering out of the glomerulus going into the tubule, you're going to end up peeing out that water. So your urine output is going to rise. And if you pee out a lot of your water, you're going to end up being dehydrated and having depletion of electrolytes and salts. So it's not good to have a GFR that's too high. What about a GFR that's too low? Let's go back a slide. Let's say this number was very low. You're someone with really low blood pressure. The pressure in here is not enough to push out a substantial amount of solute and waste. So all of that waste stays in the glomerulus and goes back into circulation, which we know is not good. You don't want to keep waste in your blood. And what it's called is azotemia. This is when you keep a lot of nitrogenous waste in your blood. Things like ammonium, like urea, creatinine, uric acid, all of those solutes, they should be peed out, not kept in your blood. So if the GFR is too low, that filtration rate in the glomerulus is too low, that means you're not filtering out enough stuff into the tubule, which means it's staying in your blood. Now, we don't always have perfect blood pressure. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, sometimes our filtration is good, sometimes it's not so great. But because we don't have conscious control over these rates, our bodies themselves have three control mechanisms for how we can control GFR. To give you like a basic example, if your kidneys sense that the GFR is too high, they can adjust themselves to lower it. And if they feel that the GFR is too low, they'll adjust themselves to increase that GFR. There's three ways to control it. Renal autoregulation. Renal means kidney, auto means self, and regulating. So the kidney regulates itself. There's sympathetic control systems. That's just the nervous system. And then hormonal controls. We've talked a little bit about hormones. We've dabbed in it here and there, but we're definitely going to learn about the main hormones that affect your kidneys. So this is where I'm going to stop for this section. Um, the next section is going to be the proximal convoluted tubule. And this is going to be a pretty hefty section, and I will post this next week. Please be sure that you are keeping up with the PowerPoints. When I go online and I'm checking the YouTube videos, I don't see that many views. I'm not sure if it's just not recording them or if you guys are not watching them um, right away. But please be sure you're staying updated with the lectures because the rest of this particular lecture is when it gets hard. So PCT physiology is exceptionally difficult. There's a lot of transporters to learn. Loop of Henley is uh, pretty tricky as well. And uh, after that, we get into collecting duct and then all the regulation. So I'm going to try to break this down into small video pieces. So we might end up having more than four videos uh, posted. But uh, please be sure to stay updated on what I am posting. Thank you so much and have a great weekend.